All right, we are thrilled to be joined today by Dana Look Arimoto uh, for our Crisis Comm series here. And we are here today to talk about everything coronavirus, but specifically how it relates to our performance in the now remote workplace, I guess you can say, since we're no longer in the office. Dana, thank you so much for joining us today. Sure, I'm happy to help. Yes, thank you. So how are you holding up, first and foremost? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's up and down all around. Some days are the best of days, some days are the worst of days, and in some cases, minute by minute, hour by hour. But overall, you know, we're healthy here, and my family and my friends and my clients seem healthy, knock on wood, and yeah. so we're hanging in. So you mentioned your clients. Can you give just a very brief understanding of what exactly you do for your clients? Sure. So I'm an executive coach and advisor. So I work with a lot of C-suite professionals that lead companies and run teams. And I really help them with both authentic leadership and also work-life integration strategies. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about work-life integration? Yeah. Well, now more than ever, we need it because we're all working from home on top of each other. And we're seeing, you know, things we've never seen before in terms of partners and husbands and wives and yeah. friends that are cordoned off together and kids and dogs uh, trying to all somehow manage through a working day with technology and connectivity, noise and overlapping on the other hand. So really helping companies figure out that we need to work differently, especially right now. And performance and results counts more than number of hours as Got an it. example. Got it. Awesome. So thank you. That's a great explanation. And, you know, on, on that note, so as you, as you noted, we are all working from home right now, um, essentially. And I think what I've heard from other clients, colleagues of mine, friends, is that it's, it's just becoming harder and harder to concentrate on work. Um, for, I think, a couple of reasons. One is because, as you mentioned, we're sort of on top of each other now, whether it's a significant other, a sibling, a, a friend, whatever, but also because we're getting bombarded every day by news around the coronavirus, whether it's a phone notification or just us proactively checking. So I was curious what some of your top line recommendations might be for staying in tune with what's going on, but also still keeping your head in the game and being able to balance your personal life with your professional. Yeah, so that's a great question. So most importantly, it's working in a micro habit kind of a way will save your sanity right now. So really focusing on the work and what is really important, like make a quick list, what's high, medium, and low, what's the lowest effort I can do for the maximum highest value, and really focus on that, even in short bursts. For some people, that's 50 minutes and a 10-minute break. For other people, it's three hours and a 13 to 15-minute break. For some people, it's literally a half a day, and then they're done. Like after four or five hours, they're just done. Right. And that goes back to tying to my last comment, which is if it's based on productivity and results and performance, not so much on hours worked, then you can actually make an adjustment to your normal course of the day. And that will also give you a time to take a breather and a pause from all the bad news because it's going to be there when you come back up for air. So really limit in short bursts how much you're intaking of that type of news right now. Yeah. And I'm curious, how do we get ourselves to focus more on that short burst mentality? Because I think, I know for someone like me, it's hard to do that because being a workaholic, I try to stay connected and do work as much as I can. I feel like if I, to be honest, I, I feel like, you know, if I don't um, put in X amount of hours, I didn't put in enough effort for that day. But I also believe in working smarter, not harder. So I think in this time, it's even harder to really focus on that because we're going so crazy with everything going on and it's hard to just kind of focus our attention on an effective strategy. So I was curious, maybe some simple tips to actually get us to that place of being able to go to that short burst mentality. Yeah. So, I mean, what I would say to most people and what I say to my clients is just try it and be an experimenter right now because there is no normal and everything has shifted overnight. And so give yourself a break and just try different things. 
Try working for 30 minutes and taking a five minute break and see if you like it or you don't. Try doing a three hour stint. If you're writing, let's say you're doing something that really requires thinking time and focus, then take an hour, go take a walk. If you can get outside or breathe the air in the window. So really challenge yourself to experiment and don't get so attached to the outcome of it. Be curious, be intellectual about it and see what might feel different for you. I'm finding that some of my clients in particular that are used to working more like 10, 11 hour days out of the home and now they're inside the home saying it's actually not physically possible hmm. because they also in many cases have competing priorities let's say kids and no daycare or no school and they're also trying to help kids with their schoolwork it's all online as well it, it's just impossible to multitask your way through this so for the workaholics and i'm still a recovering one mm -hmm. we are getting a little experiment on our hands to see if we can't work more smart and less hard Awesome. And, you know, I'm going to go back to the competing priorities in a second. Um, but I'm curious what your thoughts are in terms of how to still show your team, your manager, whoever, that you're still performing when you're not actually in the same room as them. That's actually a, a conversation that I've seen pop up a little bit more. Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, for some people, they might struggle to say, well, I don't want to be too overbearing and annoy my manager and be like, yes, I'm doing this, this, this every second of the day, but I also don't want to fall off their radar and have them be like, is that person playing video games or doing work? So curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. I mean, this is a coaching tool I use all the time. I'll apply it differently in this context, but the coaching tool is called managing up managing down and managing side to side. And those are the 360 components of management. So from the executive perspective, they need to hold people accountable. They also need to motivate people and they need to stay connected. And they need to do that more frequently than ever before, whether it's video chat or daily huddles or a weekly town hall or a happy hour virtual or coffee that's on the executives. They have to do it because that's what we need right now. The side to side is peer to peer. So make sure that you're interacting with your peers. And if you see someone doing like above and beyond great work, shout them out. We need that right now for morale. And yeah. it's easier to toot someone else's horn than your own. So yeah. most of us are pretty humble. Now the managing up part becomes more challenging, which is how do you actually not just brag about your own work, but really report up on how you're accomplishing things. So for most people, I'm suggesting a minimum of a once a week recap to your manager to say, here are my key accomplishments. Here are the things I'm still struggling with or stuck on. Highlight, low light, stuck works. That's an agile huddle kind of way of operating. Yeah. But also bragging about yourself right now. So let's say that you really do something above and beyond. It's okay, especially right now to say, hey, today was really hard, but here's what happened. So excited. I'm, I'm ready to do it again. So really communicating is the key. Cool. So going back now to uh, the competing priorities question, <laughs> question, how do you recommend that people build a support system? Because I think one of the challenges is, you know, for example, if you are someone that can work remotely, but let's say you have a significant other that can, they're still going out into the workforce, leaving the home, and it's just you there. Or if that person's working in the same room as you, but their job just has different requirements and they can't tend to your kids, let's say, during the day, but you can. How do you kind of build that support system so that you can have people on board to, um, to help you out? So this is the big question about burnout. And we were already burnt out, especially in hot markets. You know, any major market in the United States in particular is filled with workaholics, let's face it. Yeah. We're competing, we're climbing, we're trying to get to the next level. Um, you know, there's a ton of really smart, accomplished people out there. And so we're always trying to hit the next level on the ladder. Um, so burnout comes from that and over prioritizing work and not prioritizing other facets of your life, yourself, your family, your friends, the community. So well-being right now is mission critical. And so we have to prioritize that first, oxygen mask on before helping others. And then I like to say that you know, we're not running this sprint inside of this marathon because that is a surefire way of getting burned out. Yeah. Life is typically a marathon. And right now it's sort of a series of sprints. So to really do this with competing priorities, especially with multi people together in relationship, 
pass the baton is the advice I'm giving. And be really clear and prescriptive about what you can offer and what you need to receive so that it isn't all on one person. I, I'll just tell a quick story. I was talking to a mom who has a big job. She's working from home. Her two little boys are literally in our conference call. Sweet, fun, adorable, singing, playing. She's like doing schoolwork and doing our conference call. It was really remarkable. And I said, how is your husband doing? And she said, oh, he's upstairs because he works in a really competitive industry and is the only one on his team with kids. So we're trying to just protect him and leave him up there so he can get some work done with peace and quiet. And I said, what happens when you need a break? And she said, well, I'll need to reach the breaking point and I'll ask. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about rules of engagement, guardrails and guidelines, and anyone in the same space, literally, whether you're related or not, like there's some roommates in a dorm room that are still together in some cases, really make some agreements on when you're gonna pass the baton, what you can offer and what you need to receive and honor it. Okay, awesome. Well, I think we've gotten a lot of great content here. Um, Dina, can you share where people can go to learn more about you and your services? Sure, settlesmarter.com. And also for social, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, also all at Settle Smarter. And my name, Dana Logarimoto. Awesome, well, thanks so much, Dana. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.